So in this video, I want to talk briefly, very briefly, about bounding summations. And so starting with our original example, you know, you remember we had this, this summation that represented the number of operations for our, you know, general program. Um, and we said that this formula right here is going to give us the number of operations that this program would do over any n sequential iterations. And in programming, what we like to do is we we like to bound our the number of operations that we are going to uh, do, uh, and and use that bound as sort of our you know how we think about the runtime or the number of operations that our program is going to do, and so. This this formula and, and why do we do that? It's it's actually easier. It makes it easier to think about our programs. It makes it easier to uh, analyze them because asymptotically, as n goes to infinity, we know for a fact that the number of operations that our program will do will never ever ever pass this point if we're able to bound it. And that's a very powerful statement, especially if we know that we're going to be dealing with large inputs, but we don't know to how big, it, we, we don't know how big it could possibly be. And so if we expand this formula out real quick, uh, let's just take the one half out, and then we're left with n times n plus one. And this is also, you know, leaving the one half out is going to be, and then, you know, just sort of distributing here is going to be, uh, n squared plus n. And this is sort of what our uh, function is going to represent. And this this is like not something that I want to have in my head <laughs> when I'm thinking about my program. Uh, it's, it would be much, much nicer to, to do this, um, to say, okay, right here, every iteration from i equals 1 to n, we're going to just be adding up i. But we know that this this whole sum right here, we know for certain, and we can all agree that it's not going to the the sum of i equals one to n of i is not going to be uh, as high as this, the sum from i equals one to n of n, right? Because that means here the first number that we have is going to be one, so we're going to do one, and then the next number is going to be two, and we're going to be one plus two. Here, we're just going to go straight to adding 10, or n, sorry, n at the start. And so if we had n is equal to 10, or n is equal to 5, let's say with n equals 5. If we had n is equal to 5, right, in our first case, number 1, and I'm going to write number 2. Number 1, we're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. In the second case, the sum from i equals 1 to n of n, it's going to be 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. And this one right here is for sure going to be bigger. And so we could easily say, without a doubt, that this right here is more smooth all for, for any sort of n is going to be bigger than this. And what this means, this sum right here, this is actually just the same thing as n squared. Just a quadratic function. And why is it n squared? Well, if you have the number n and you add it up by itself n times, that's going to be n squared. If we have 5, if 5 is n and we do 5 plus 5 plus 5 five times, then you're going to get 25, which is 5 squared. And that is why this is n squared. And so we can say that the number of operations of our program, our general program, is for sure, no matter how large n can be, it can be n is equal to a trillion all the way out to infinity, it will never, ever, ever, the number of operations will never, ever, ever pass n squared. And so how would we look at this, like, if we, how would we graph this? I want to graph this real quick. I want to graph this formula and then this formula to show what the bound really looks like to drill this point home. And so here I've graphed. Uh, I'm using Desmos. Desmos is a really powerful tool uh, for graphing. And so I have graphed n plus n times n plus 1 over 2 right here. This is the red line. And then I've graphed uh, x squared, or n squared in our case. And as you can see, that if for really small inputs, um, you know, we do actually see uh, n times n plus 1 over 2 actually be have more operations than, than n squared. And I know I said, like, no matter how big the input is, but I'm talking about asymptotics here, where we do reach a certain point 
at n equals 1, the first iteration, right, and which is all we really care about, n is equal to 1, because we're dealing with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in terms of the sequence, where for all of infinity, we don't, it doesn't really matter how far out we go, that, and we really only care about past 0, no matter how far out we go, um, you know, really large numbers, that n squared is always going to be bigger. It's always going to give you a higher number for the same value of your iteration than our other formula. And we can rest assured that n squared is going to perfectly bound our number of operations that we had calculated for all of infinity, uh, no matter how many iterations we do. And n squared is a lot simpler function to think about than n squared plus n, you know, divided by 2, <laughs> or n times n plus 1 over 2. You know, so that's why we do that, and that is one way, that's how we can actually balance summations and, and then graph them.